This message brought to you by Sambo and Honky. In this week's video, we'll be having fun with impellers and math. Here we have listed the standard Hamilton 212 impellers in kilowatts. So you see there's the 4KW, then the 3.4, then the 2.9, and 2.4. These are the standard numbers that you may be very familiar with. As you're probably aware, kilowatts is a unit of power, and so is horsepower. And here's a conversion factor that lets us get from uh, kilowatts to uh, horsepower. So 1KW is 1.341 horsepower. Then we apply this conversion factor to our KW impeller numbers and get HP uh, impeller numbers. So you can see the 4KW becomes a 5.364 horsepower impeller. So it turns out this uh, 5.364 horsepower is actually at 1000 RPM. And then the horsepower requirement goes up from there and that is a cubic function. So in other words, if you want to double the RPM from 1,000 to 2,000 RPM, then you, the power input is a cube of 2, or 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So you need 8 times the power uh, to double the RPMs. Uh, if you want to, say, triple the RPM, then you need 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 times the power. And if you want to go all the way up to 4,000 RPM, then you need 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64 times as much power. So you can see the power input goes up very drastically as the RPM goes up. And by the time you're up to, say, 5,000 RPM, then you need 5 times 5 times 5 is 125 times the uh, original 5.364 horsepower. So that's a lot of horsepower. And in this big block of numbers, we have the horsepower uh, compared with the RPM for each of the impellers. So you can see uh, the 4.0 impeller uh, begins with 5.36 horsepower at 1,000 RPM. And by the time you're up to 5,000 RPM, that's 670 horsepower. So there you can see it's gone up a lot. And we have numbers uh, arranged for each of the four, three, 3.4, 2.9, and 2.4 impellers. And now if we plot those, they look like this. So you can see at idle, there's uh, almost no horsepower input. And, and that's sort of evidenced by the fact that you can start your engine when it's effectively in gear. And, you know, there's no clutch to pop in a boat. You know, you just turn the key and the engine starts. So uh, almost no power is required to hold it at an idle. And then by the time you get up to 4,000 RPM, there's a lot of power required and, and more for the 4.0 impeller, obviously. So this chart lets you do some interesting things. Uh, suppose you have an engine that is giving you 3,600 RPM with a 3.4 impeller. Then you have about, say, 210 horsepower. And if you do an engine swap and your new engine gets that same impeller up to 4,400 RPM, then you have about, uh, let's say, uh, 390 horsepower. So there you can see the effective horsepower increase from this engine swap. But it turns out you actually don't even need this chart to figure this out because uh, we know that this is a cubic function. So if you just want to see the fractional increase in the horsepower, then all you have to do is take the cube of the ratio of the RPMs and that will give you your, uh, your effective power increase. So in this example, we've gone from 3,600 to 4,400 RPM. So we take the ratio of those two numbers, cube it, and the result is 1.83. So in other words, there's been an 83% increase in power. So sometimes people wonder what would happen if they change their impeller. Would the RPMs go up or down? And what would happen to the peak horsepower? Well, if you have a performance chart like this for the 6.2 DI engine from Chem, uh, you can take the horsepower curve and overlay it onto the impeller horsepower curve and get something like this. So this shows that with the Chem 6.2 DI engine, if you go from a 4.0 to a 3.4 impeller, then you'll pick up roughly 300 RPM and maybe 25 horsepower on the top end. So a question to ask is whether this is exactly what would happen, and the answer is no. This is theory, and theory is different from practice, so you'd actually have to test it to see what happens. And uh, ways that theory and practice can be different is, for example, that 4.0 impeller, 
assumes that it's a 4.0. And if the manufacturing tolerance is, say, within 5% of that, then the 4.0 could actually be a 3.8 or a 4.2. And the same goes for that 3.4 impeller. So exactly what would happen here is not certain. And then you have the, uh, the assumption that the power curve for the impellers is exactly a cubic, and that won't be true. Particularly at higher RPMs, it may not be true. So you might say, well, that sure was handy that you had that power curve for that 6.2 DI, but what happens if for my engine, I don't have that handy power curve, then what do I do? Well, it turns out you can get an approximate result by assuming that your engine has constant torque over the range of interest. And if you have constant torque, then that implies that the power increases with a constant slope. And so here you can see what happens if you assume a constant slope. Uh, you have a known point here for your 4.0 impeller. Uh, you know, so you're just a little under 300 horsepower and uh, uh, at 3,800 RPM. And then, well, at zero RPM, of course, your horsepower is zero. So you just plot a line through that and then extend it up through your 3.4 impeller or whatever impeller that you want. And you can see about what the RPM will be and uh, what the horsepower increase will be. So we'll, here we'll zoom in on that same picture and you can see that if we started at 3800 RPM with the 4.0 impeller, that's our, that's our known starting point, and then uh, switch to the 3.4 impeller, we pick up about 300 RPM and maybe 25 horsepower, which is about what we were predicting using the handy chem power curves. So this shows that you really don't need those uh, power curves as long as your torque is roughly constant and over uh, small distances, that is approximately true. So another question to ask is, well, if I make this impeller swap, what's going to happen to my cruise RPM? You know, is it going to go up or down by a lot or a little or what? And well, the way you can figure this out is just to look at a line of constant horsepower. So in this case, we're using a reference of 3200 RPM as our cruise with a 4.0 impeller. And then for each reduction in size, uh, that increases the RPM by about, uh, say, 200. And if you were to go all the way to a 2.4 impeller, then uh, that would take your cruise RPM from 3200 to about 3800 RPM. So the point here is that with a little bit of math, you can figure out the effect of an impeller swap and make a decision about whether that's worth doing. And you can also figure out a little bit about whether an engine replacement or an engine improvement is worth doing. Uh, you know, so people will improve their engine and they expect maybe a 10% increase in horsepower. And well, it turns out that's really not going to give you a whole lot of RPM. And you may notice it a little bit that the boat will be performing a little bit better. But if you really want to notice, you know, have a night and day difference, uh, then you really need a lot of horsepower uh, before you're going to be feeling the difference. So my opinion is, you know, when you're making an engine modification or an engine swap, it's either go big or go home. This message brought to you by Sambo and Honky.